This is round five of Mansions of Madness. We've got investigators very, very close to the door that I assume is the attic door, or the, the passage to the attic. I've got Mean over here bravely rummaging through desks into table drawers, and she had to drop, uh, because of a myth mythos event, she had to drop an old journal, which I think is evidence. Yes, it's evidence, so should should pick that back up, probably. But before we bother with that, we're going to just have Charlie, who has brass key, step up, move one, and then interact with that door. See what's behind this door, finally. The weathered door stands at the end of the hall. You hear bizarre noises from the other side. When you try the handle, you find that it is locked. A keyhole beneath the brass door handle. You can explore it if you have the brass key unique item. Well, Charlie has the brass key unique item, so he is going to explore. Oh, interesting. Okay. As you, this, I, I cannot express how different this is from the other playthroughs that I've done of this exact same adventure. It's really, really intriguing. So as you open the door to the unfinished attic, the stairs and walls creak as if exhaling a breath of dusty air. Everything in the room has been pushed to the side, and a massive circle of runes has been carved into the floor. Discard this explore token and place the attic tile and a wall as indicated. Okay, so this is a, a big room, and I'm going to just sort of push the board... I mean, we, we've heard from the butler that Mr. Vanderbilt is hanging out here in the attic, supposedly kidnapped. I don't know if the butler is just delusional, or if the butler is lying, but I don't think that Mr. Vanderbilt is the victim here. <laughs> I really, really don't. I don't know what this is, but I need to block that door off. It looks vaguely... No, that is a door. I think I just tried to block a door with a door. Uh, here's some bookshelves and a chair. I think that's actually a barricade tile, but there's nothing to barricade, so it doesn't really matter, I don't think. So there's the attic tile. All right, give us the bad news. On the far side of the attic, furniture and other random items have been pushed up against the wall. Among the items, you spot something useful. Place the enchanted blade common item. I would draw no swords, but what are sanctified. William Yorick. Uh, so this is, it does three damage, which is not bad. So that's just lying uh, along the wall. And here's the bad news. Okay, two robed figures stand across from each other over the ritual circle chanting. The one nearest you seems to be in some kind of trance and hardly acknowledges your approach. Spawn a cultist as indicated. We'll use the same cultist figure, and he's at the top of the stairs it looks like. And the other figure lowers the hood of his robe and points at you with an ornate dagger. What are you doing on my property? You are meddling in things you do not understand, and you will die for it. Spawn a priest of Dagon, as indicated. This is William Vanderbilt. Yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't buy the uh, kidnapping story after I saw his, his handwritten notes about performing rituals. Okay, so I'll put him here, it says. And actually, I mean, he's, he's kind of in fancy blue robe, so maybe I'll take this red robe guy away and put another blue one. Maybe red is security. Just an idea. Red could be security, and blue could be ritual magic. Okay. Oh dear. There it gets worse. <laughs> William Vanderbilt begins chanting a heinous incantation that causes reality to warp and shift. A terrible fish-like creature slips through the fabric of reality into our world, spawn a deep one way over there in the secret room. That's... that doesn't feel that threatening, because it is quite far away. But they, they do move fast, and we're, we're not... Oh, and, oh dear, elsewhere in the mansion, a second deep one spawns. So this is in the, the non-secret study, the, just the normal study. Okay, that, that does start to... this is starting to feel a little bit crowded. Oh my goodness, the pungent scent of rotting flesh precedes the third amphibious monstrosity that slips into our world with a splash of salt water, spawn a deep one in the bedroom. A ritual circle on the ground is scattered with candles, skulls, and other trinkets. If you could get these ritual components, you could stop the cult's vile magic and have enough proof to condemn the Vanderbilt family. Place an interact token as indicated. 
So that's right up there at the top of the stairs near that ritual dagger. You may move one space into the explore the, the the unexplored area. You must interrupt the ritual taking place before it is complete. All right. Well, we have a goal. Charlie could move into this space. It it has invited him to do so. I don't know that he needs to I mean, there's no advantage to him doing that. Like, literally, he could just move 1-2 on his next turn. But we have a lot of creatures that are going to emerge from other sections of this mansion. So I think maybe moving him into that space is probably sort of safer for him. And we need to just get... I mean, we obviously need to disrupt this from happening. And, and you know, the... My initial impulse, I guess, is to just send Rita in, right? Because, I mean, she takes care of business. However, I don't know that this is going to be something that Rita is particularly good at. I feel like in this particular case, because it's all occult and magic and lore-based, I feel like Carson might be the guy. And he does have a... Well, he has Arcane Insight. No, that's not useful. He's got Spectral Razor Spell. The energy you channel lashes out with deadly precision. So he could step up to this dude and attack him, or he can try to grab the trinkets. And I, I believe that if he grabs the trinkets, then we all just have to get away, or one of us has to get to get away, or something like that. So I think probably that's the way to go. One, two, that's one move. So now he's in the same space, and now he's going to mess with these... Uh, with these trinkets, the ritual components. A ritual circle is carved into the ground, scattered with components. You attempt to retrieve the ritual components, but a malign energy protects them. Yeah, that's what I figured. Using your gut and scraps of knowledge you have gathered, you attempt to remove the items without triggering the defensive magic. This is going to be a lore check. You may discard any number of evidence to convert an equal number of clue tokens to or cl cl clue results to success results. And unfortunately, he doesn't have any clue things. Oh, but he's got a light source, he, and you can discard this to convert all clue to success. Okay, so I think he's going to use his candles, but this is assuming that he gets any successes. So let's see what happens. Okay, that's not bad. That's one success, and then two clues. So if he uses his candle card, he'll discard it into that pile there, which is now the discard pile. Those become successes. So that's one success, two, two success, three successes. Let's see if that's enough to hold back this dark magic. You remove several items successfully, but you trip up, causing the magic to lash out at you and burn your skin, suffer one face down damage. Well, seeing as that's the first damage he has taken, I'm not that concerned. And it's face down, which means I don't even have to read the card. He just, he's just, he's just damaged. But did that do it? Did that disrupt the spell? Or the ritual? I don't know that it did. Click on it again. A ritual, yeah, it didn't, I don't think. Yeah, hmm. I guess I should have, um... I guess I should have re-rolled. I should have had him re-roll with Mean's power. Or, or is that something that only Mean can do? Well, I have contingencies built in for this. This is exactly why I did it in this particular order. I've got Rita here. So she can move in because she's super speedy. So it's one, one move. So now she's in the space. And now she can try to disrupt this ritual. She doesn't have nearly as much lore power as Carson. So I don't know. I, I literally don't know if she can get the number that she needs. She's only got three dice in lore. Using your gut and scraps of knowledge, defensive magic, lore. Okay, but you can just... Does she have any evidence to... No. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I guess I guess we'll just do this again then. As contingencies go, I will admit, this might not be the best. Fail, fail, fail. <laughs> Three fails. Wow, that's bad. But wait, does Mean have something for this? Or someone has something that says, like, you can re-roll. It's holy water. 
as an action, discard one... No, it's not horror. No, it's a kerosene lantern. You may discard this card to convert all clue... Oh, that's an unarmed attack only. Okay. Nope. Okay, so that didn't work out very well. And Carson has no actions to grant. Yeah, so we've we've really not done well here. This is very bad. Like, bad enough to possibly be the end game. <laughs> like, this is so bad. Uh, I could send Mean in from... Where is Mean? She's way off screen down south. So she can come in one, two. But by the time she gets inside, like, to, to be able to disrupt the ritual, it, she'll kind of... It, she won't have any actions left. But, I mean, getting farther away from all of the deep ones is probably a good idea, so we're just all going to take damage this round and see what happens. Oh, and worse yet, I forgot, Rita failed, so she probably is going to take damage just from doing this. You remove several items successfully, but you trip up, you suffer one face down damage. Okay, well, she can, she can withstand that. That's... It's not that bad. That's not what I'm worried about. What I'm really worried about are, are all the monsters that are about to unleash their wrath in the investigator phase. Yes, unfortunately. Okay, Minthi fans thinks she sees a shadowy creature stalking towards her. Well, I've got news for you, Mean. You do. Willpower too. Uh, so yeah, let's do a willpower check. Mean, I think, is three willpower. <laughs> One one clue um so she'll, she'll she's gonna spend a clue to of try to avoid at least cancel one thing out fails suffer two horror and move two spaces from the attic stairs oh wow interesting so one two well she wasn't in the stairs oh but two from the stairs so here's there's the stairs one two i'm assuming i, I guess that's what it must mean it's a it's weird I don't know, because, I mean, so she's moving. Yeah, I guess, whatever. And she took, what did she take, damage? No, horror. So she'll take one horror, because she did get one success. And this is hysteria. You scream and scream and scream. You slap yourself as hard as you can, hoping to break the cycle. Flip one damage face up, then flip this face down. Okay, mean has no damage yet uh so that doesn't apply but she does she does now have one horror her her sanity is um seven so i'm not too worried the cultist moves two spaces toward the nearest investigator well he doesn't have to move he's got nothing but investigators in his space right now then it attacks the investigator with the lowest strength well that would not be rita <laughs> so he's attacking carson the cultist comes in low and lifts you into the air agility two to resist so Carson has only two agility. So that doesn't seem like that's going to work out for him. But you never know. <laughs> I mean, two successes? Okay. Maybe it will work out for him. If you pass, you knee the cultist in the face and escape. If you fail, doesn't matter. Didn't happen. Cool. Okay, Vanderbilt moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator, then attacks the person with the most items. Vanderbilt grabs at one of the items in your possession, attempting to wrest it from you. Strength of two. Okay, so let's see how this this goes. This is a very crowded square. Uh, don't stand on the ritual circle, Mr. Vanderbilt. You should know better than that. I think the one with the most items would be Carson, be, uh, compared to Rita, who has literally a machete. I think that she, yeah, she, all she's got is her trusty machete. So he, th this guy's going to try to wrest either an arcane manuscript or a holy cross. Oh, it, it, I don't know which one yet. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we're uh, doing strength of th uh, three for Carson. Carson has no clues to spend, but Mean is within range. And what does she have? She has like some kind of... Doesn't she have an ability or something? Once per round, you or another investigator within range. One, two, three. She's just in range. So she can grant him the ability to re-roll a die. So that's two successes and a clue. But again, no, he doesn't have any power to convert that clue. But he doesn't need it. 
So, because it's a strength uh, of two requirement, and he passes. If you pass, you maintain your grip. If you fail, you lose your grip. Doesn't matter. Deep One moves two spaces to the nearest investigator. Okay, so I don't know which Deep One is which, so I'll just kind of... I guess I'll move off screen here. There's one, two down in the in the entryway. And then, of course, there is this guy up here in the way over here off screen so now he's in the like the hallway or the, the the library rather and then i'm assuming that this guy's gonna do the same thing so one two that's i'm assuming we're getting to the point where all the deep ones are going to move two towards an investigator and then attack so it looks like probably mean is going to be attacked but we'll go back to the app just to to make sure so one of them was nothing Another one of them was nothing, and then the third one does exactly what I thought. Monster attacks mean. A guttural sound escapes the Deep One's throat as it gazes at you. Its throat bulges for a moment before it spits a frothing stream of salt water into your eyes. Suffer two face-down damage, but your agility negates. Agility from mean is four. It's not bad, and she's got two clue tokens. She could get through this. So four... That's, um, that's one. So she's got two clues and a success. Suffer so two face down. So she needs to negate two damage. She has two clues and one success. So if she spends one clue token, leaving her with just one clue token left, by the way, then she negates both and all other conditions become null and void. So she's okay. Each investigator must now resolve a horror check. Right, okay. This is going to be a lot of checks, I'll tell you. Um, so there's a cultist, there's the Mr. William Vanderbilt, and then there's one deep one. So let's, I guess, yeah, we'll do the cultist. We'll just go down the line, right? I mean, cultist, resolve, confirm. The cultist slams a steel shod or staff into the ground, and the ground splits open. A great eye bulges up from the opening, then shifts its gaze on you. Suffer one horror, but your willpower negates, and then flip one horror face up. That's this guy. So he hits the ground. It opens up. There's an eyeball staring out at everyone. So Rita and Carson need to resolve that, and I believe... So does this guy, because he's within range. And possibly mean as well. One, two, three. I think possibly everyone has to roll on this, which is just a lot of rolling. It's, it's easier on a multiplayer game, obviously, because everyone's just rolling for their own character. But for this, it just, I don't know, it seems like it could get confusing. But we'll see. So I'll just Carson success. So he's fine because he just needed. You only need one success to negate. Um, brain power for mean is three dice. Success again, and then who's this? You know what I might do to to speed this process up is just say out of all all of the threats on the board, one, two, three, or within range, one, two, three. I think I'm going to assume that everyone suffers a result. Uh, 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 one loss one out of three that seems reasonable right because then like here's here's like uh who's this rita no this is charlie charlie success again rita she's uh four as well success yeah i'm, I'm not even sure if they, they would i mean i guess it depends on what the test is but those are all successes against the cultist here's vanderbilt Vanderbilt exclaims the truth of present and imminent horror. Suffer three face-down horror, but again, willpower negates. Okay, so th essentially then you need three successes. So th this is a lot more likely to fail. Um, so again, Carson, willpower is three. So he gets two horror. One, two, and they're face-down, thank goodness. I don't have to sit there and read them all. So he's got two horror out of six. Uh, out of six sanity. Mean, same same deal. 
uh, but she succeeds three times, so she gets uh, she gets off scot free. Um, Charlie, 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 Charlie gets four die, and only scores two success or two clues. He's got nine sanity, so I think as outrageous as it seems, I think I'm just gonna take three three horror. One, two, three for Charlie. I might regret that later because he's sitting on four clue tokens. But as I've said before, the the sanity is not the problem. The the health bar is the problem. You run out of health, you're out of the game. You run out of sanity, you 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 things change possibly for the worse, but you're you're still in the game. And this that was Rita with her four brain power. She has no clue tokens to spend, so she will take a horror. So she's got three horror out of five, so she is actually pretty precariously balanced there. Okay, and then there's one, one deep one within range of, again, well, no, one, two, th yeah, one, two, three, yeah, within range of everyone. Deep one opens its mouth and a choking wet song emerges, emerges from its throat. It is no human sound, but you feel the creature's yearning, fear, and hate in every note. Suffer two horror, but again, willpower negates. So we're up against two, essentially. So, you know the drill. Carson. That's one success, so he'll take another horror. Mean. Ooh, that's three... Uh, you know what, though? She might just... She might re-roll... No, she can't. She can't... Well, she could re-roll one, I think. Success. So she only takes two damage. Unless I'm... Or two horror, rather. Unless I'm misremembering and she's already used that power. But I don't think it's going to matter that much. Uh, who did I just roll for? Oh, that was Charlie, and I cheated because he... I just rolled a five. So he'll take one horror. Yes, that's cheating. I don't... I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I just picked up all the dice. And then this is Rita, who doesn't have any clues to spend, so she only gets one success, meaning that she suffers two horror. Which means, I think, that Rita might be insane now. Yes, she is. Rita has become insane. She's got three horror cards. She's only got five sanity. Which means that I discard her horror cards and I draw an insanity token, or a card rather, for Rita. And this is where it gets potentially interesting. Look at the back of this card, but do not reveal it to other investigators. Pyromania. Fire keeps you warm and it keeps away the darkness. The only way you will be safe is if you light as many beautiful, beautiful fires as you can. You do not win the game as normal. At the start of your turn, if six or more rooms contain fire, you immediately win the game, and the game ends. If the game ends for any other reason, you lose the game. Okay, so obviously this, is, um, this works a lot better with more players. Each, ins each insanity card has a number of players that it's valid for, and this is a three plus player. So I guess the, the only way for this to make sense for me, because I'm, I am one player, is if I, if I draw an insane card for one player. Even though I'm playing four playable characters, it, it doesn't, it obviously, I mean, I guess I could pit them all Maybe that would be interesting. Just pit them all against each other and see who wins. That could be worth doing. Yeah, because this is an interesting mechanic. This is just fun. So if she can set fire in, in six or more rooms, then she wins the game. I don't think she can do that. I mean, she doesn't even have a light source, so she's going to have to rest a kerosene lantern off of Mean to get that. But I'll have to look up the fire rules, I guess. So yeah, insanity is a is is really kind of a game changer in this game to the point of like almost house betrayal and house 
uh, uh, Hill House, House of the Hill, on the Hill, whatever. Just it completely changes the game in some cases. Of course, I I'll, I'll look into the fire rules to see how reasonable it is. If it doesn't make sense, then I'll switch over to a one a one player insane card. But that's this round, I think. I guess I should go back just to confirm. Yeah, that that's this round because that's all the horror checks. And it is now the investigator uh, phase, so that is everything. Getting close though. Probably, probably next time will be the the final. Well, I don't know. It depends. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Things are really obviously heating up. Thanks for watching.